Good morning and welcome to Trinity Alliance Church. Um, buckle your seatbelts, guys. I have a lot of announcements this morning. Um, first off, I just want to bring Derek and Megan Chan to your attention. Megan is not healing the way that they um, expected her to. She's still up at Virtua. For anybody who doesn't know, she had um, surgery to remove four fibroids. They missed a part of one in the original surgery and it filled with blood and was blocking um, her intestines. So she ended up having to go back in and have another emergency surgery to remove that. Um, she is experiencing a lot of swelling and they don't know why her kidneys are not working properly. Um, so Sean and I would like to invite you to come with us this afternoon. We're gonna meet here at 3.30 and we're gonna caravan up to Virtua. There's like a little courtyard outside of her yard and we just wanna go pray with her and Derek. Um, they're discouraged, and um, they weren't getting answers from doctors that they wanted when they kind of turned up the fire with the doctors and said, hey, we would like to transfer. That's when they started, um, you know, paying more attention to them, I guess. So if you can't come today, please pray. We'll probably be there between 4.30 and 5.30. Just pray with us at that time. Um, and just pray for peace for Megan. I know that this is a really hard time for her, and it's hard for Derek because... It's feeling like an island up there. Um, so that's the first one. The second one is the t-shirts are in, guys. See? 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 All right. If you ordered your t-shirts, Christy will be here after first service. Um, and you can pay for your t-shirts and receive your t-shirts today. If you have not ordered your t-shirts, 
we need to put another order in like tomorrow. So please make sure she has your sizes. Um, and what else? If, like there are no extras, so <laughs> you have to make sure that you let her know what your sizes are and get your money in. Um, VBS donations, there's still lots of snacks um, that we ne are needing. Um, the bunch of balloons, you guys know the ones that you stick in and it's 100 done in like two seconds. Those are the ones that we need. Um, let's see, lots of water bottles, glow sticks, but the, the lists are out on the table. Just go, go check it out. Um, there's still lots of volunteer opportunities. Uh, the lists are on the table. Please go and fill in your name. Um, it's going to be a great week. It's going to be a lot of fun. And uh, we're just praying that lots of little souls are touched for Jesus. Um, and then, oh, this coming Saturday, we're doing an outreach. This is the final um, package that's going to be delivered to hopefully more than one laundromat in the area. I can't get in touch with a lot of the owners. But at least one of our local laundromats is going to be getting these packages. Inside is laundry detergent, fabric softener sheets, um, $4 worth of quarters, and information on the VBS as well as the new cards that are out that um, have our church information on it. Um, if you can meet on Saturday, I'm thinking like 1 o'clock, that would be awesome. Come, come see me. If you can't meet Saturday, then there will be lots of opportunities between now and VBS, and we can make sure that you have a packet in the car, and then you can, at your own um, leisure, deliver it to um, the laundromats that we have set up. Um, we're just trying to get some families who may not have opportunity um, that might be willing to bring their kids to come on down to VBS. So um, pray about it, and you can find my number in the directory, text me. We'll get you all set up with a, a packet and a way to go deliver some good news to families in the area. All right. I think that's it. Would you stand as we enter into worship? The Word of God says in Psalm 55, cast your cares on the Lord and he will sustain you. He will never let the righteous be shaken, but you, God, will bring down the wicked into the pit of de decay. But as for me, I trust in you. Let's worship him with everything we are this morning. Yeah. 
face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. Heavenly Father, we come to this place and we invoke your blessings over this place here. We stand and testify to your goodness. We will proclaim from the rooftops. We will shout out your name. You alone are worthy of praise. You carry our burdens. You heal our sick. You provide when there isn't anything left. You meet our needs before we're even aware, God. That's just who you are. Oh, Lord, make us like you. Father, I, I pray this morning that you would just transform each one of us from the inside out, God, that we would look more like you and less like us. I don't want to be dirty anymore. I don't want to be a mess. I want to be whole and blessed because I belong to you, Lord. I pray that we reflect your name. The more that we know your character, I just pray, God, that you are in this place and you're working in each one of us, God. Lord, we lift up our sister right now. God, we've seen you in hopeless situations. We felt your presence. We've watched miracles. We've testified to your goodness. So, Lord, we ask right now in the name of Jesus Christ that you touch Megan's body. Your word says when we pray, believing and knowing who you are, you are the great physician and you will bestow your healing. So, God, we pray that right now she feels the arms of love around her and that the doctors don't even have a clue. And that's okay. You use them, Lord, to find healing. But God, you alone are the great physician, and we trust in you, and we know that you're guiding them. But it's hard. This race has been long for Megan, and she feels like she's losing, God. Remind her that you have already won. The victory is hers, God. So we pray in the name of Jesus. We pray healing. We pray comfort and peace. We pray for a tranquil mind for Derek, her husband. And God, I ask for every person who encounters Megan, I know her soul, you shine in her, God. So I ask that even now she would feel your presence and she would testify to your goodness. Lord, we are not together geographically, but you are over all and you are everywhere. And we believe in that Holy Spirit. I praise you for the miracles that are standing on this stage. I praise you for the miracles that are standing in this room. And I praise you for the miracles that have yet to come. We worship you, God. We believe in you and we know you are true and you are faithful. Bring your peace. Bring your healing. Teach us how to surrender and belong completely and totally to you, Lord. We worship you, Jesus. In your holy name we pray. Amen.
Father, we know that you were with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the fire. We know you were with the Israelites when you held back the water. God, you were with Christy in crisis when CJ was born. You were with us when our son crashed into a tree and shouldn't be here, but he is. You're with each one of us when we lose family members prematurely and we're heartbroken, when cancer strikes. No matter where you are, my God is there. That's what this is about not about me just whining about all the troubles I make. This is about testifying to the goodness of our God. So wherever you are, if you hurt, He hurts. If you're broken, He's broken with you. Bring it to the foot of the cross. Trust Him. He will bring you through. He is already on the other side already claimed the victory for you. Don't go another day with that burden. Please lay it down. Heavenly Father, we just praise you. We cry out to you. I have felt the fire, but I did not get burned. I have seen the water, but I did not drown. Know that whatever's next, whatever comes tomorrow, that you will lead through it. Oh Lord, let me follow. We pray as a body of believers here in this place that you would give us mindfulness of who you are. Let me feel you when the fire gets hot. Let me feel you when the oceans are raging. Let me feel you when I feel alone. We worship you, God, with everything we are today, Jesus. Thank you, God, for who you are and who you will forever be for each one of us. You meet our needs before we're aware. We love you, Lord. In Jesus' name.
darkest night you were close like no other I've known you as a father I've known you as a friend and I have lived in the goodness of God all my life you have Um, I'd like to read from John 14, uh, verses 15 through 17. If you love me, keep my commands. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to help you and be with you forever. The spirit of truth. The world cannot accept him because it neither sees him or knows him but you know him and he lives in you and will be in you. The um, men's Bible study would like to invite the men in this church to um, a breakfast next Saturday morning at eight o'clock. The topic is going to be the Holy Spirit presented by uh, Pastor John Cook uh, he's retired, and he's agreed to come and, and uh, speak to us men um, to have a, a breakfast with us, um, bacon, eggs, pancakes, all the good stuff. And, um, <clears throat> but he's been studying the Holy Spirit, and he wants to share that with you. So please don't miss that opportunity. Next Saturday, 8 o'clock. Would you pray with me? Father God, you are so, so good as we just uh, sung to you, Lord. You are, you are good to all of us. Um, we just sometimes don't see it. We don't know it. Um, sometimes we are sick, unable to praise. Um, sometimes we're uh, hurting, Lord. And I just pray for the people in this church today who are um, hurting in some way. Lord, you, you know us. You know who we are. And Lord, <clears throat> I just thank you for uh, giving us your Holy Spirit. And I, I just pray that you would uh, bless Pastor Jeff. Now, as he comes forward, give him an extra measure of the Holy Spirit, Lord. And um, we just pray that you would be honored by everything that he says, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Ah, good morning, everyone. It is, uh, it is good to be here. We've had a, a lot of announcements. A lot of things are, are kicking in. We've got VBS. We've got all kinds of stuff happening. 
life is coming back into Trinity. We are now, you know, people are, are filling in the, the, the seats. We're coming back together. Our ministries are all starting to, to come back together. And it is so good. I want you to remember, uh, as we were going through COVID, we kind of went through why we do what we do. Here at Trinity, we truly believe that what God wants for us is to have a passion for Him and compassion for others. It's our goal to invest in people's lives and invite them. Invite them into that relationship with Christ. And that's what, if you haven't noticed, that's what we're doing. That's what this is all about. This is the investing. It's investing in, in people and inviting them out. VBS is an investing in, in our little ones and, and, and inviting them into a deeper walk with, with Christ. We also want to be people who are engaged and equipped that we, we have a responsibility. It's not my job to make sure you're equipped. It's my job to do some of the equipping, but it's your job to, do, to be part of it. You have to be an active participant. You cannot just be a pew sitter. You have to be an active participant in your relationship with God. I cannot be a, 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 a consumer of my relationship with my wife and just sit back and let her serve me and have no interaction really with her. No, I need to have, I need to be part of that. So I need to be part of the engaging and equipping in my, in my life. And then the last piece is we serve and we send. We serve. We serve in VBS. We serve in our kids' church. You see ushers walking around. You see greeters who are welcoming people here. You see nursery workers. You see uh, youth workers. You see worship team members. There are plenty of avenues and opportunities for you to serve in this church. But if you take any of those aspects and you say, you know what, that's just not for me, you're going to not be able to grow. The passion for God that, that, that God wants you to have with him and that you truly desire won't be there. And so that is just a quick explanation of what we do. Now, when you walked in, you were handed a little card. All right, This is not how Trinity is going to advertise. We're not looking to try to start an advertising campaign so we want to post these wherever we can. No. We know that you naturally, because Trinity is an amazing church, you naturally invest in people. Whether it's somebody in the, in, the, in the grocery line that you're talking to, whether it's somebody who's at work, this is just a quick and simple way for somebody to get access to, to Trinity and the website and the information that you're probably already talking to them about. So let's say you're talking to somebody about VBS, you hand them this card and you say, oh, all of the information is right there. Here's a QR code. If you're older, you're like, what? That just looks like a lot of black little dots. No, you put your phone up to it, it takes you to the website of the church, gets them set to where they want to go. It's just a way that you can continue to pass on and invest in people. It's a way to invite them in deeper. I've had a handful of people say, hey, you know what, how do I get people to watch the, the sermons online? You know, I was talking with my aunt and just simply hand them the card and say, listen, just watch one of the services and, and come on out. You know, this is who we are and this is what we're about. Come and check that out. All right, so grab these cards. We want them to disappear. The goal is we don't want to just keep them here. We want them to be passed out, but we want them to be passed out as you invest in others. We want this to be a tool that you're able to use to help invest in others and draw them in closer to Christ. So grab a handful of them on your way out, not literally a handful, because they're cards. You could take like all of them in one hand. So take a, take a few so that you can do that. They'll be here each week so you can replenish your stack as you go through it in, throughout the week. But these are opportunities to share with, uh, with one another. All right. One last piece of business for those of you who are online we want to welcome you. We want to thank you for being here online. We've uh, fixed our volume. I've heard you. You've told me that we need to turn the volume up a little bit. We've turned the volume up so that uh, hopefully you can hear us well. If not, they're doing it right now. So it'll be nice and loud from here on out. Um, but if you're online, if you would do me a favor and send me a text message so we know that you're watching and we know who you are, uh, I was surprised Sean's parents, uh, Sean Bates' parents were here this week, and they're like, ah, we watch every week. What? I had no idea you were online. That's fantastic, but 
but I, would, I really want to help connect. I want to get to know who you are. I want to make sure that some of the people who aren't here are able to watch online. So please send me a text. My number is 609-703-1474. Even if you watch this a month from now, I still want you to text me just to let me know that you're watching. Fair enough. We covered all of our business. Let's dive into Revelation. What? We're in Revelation? <laughs> it seems like anytime there's a new person who comes into church, we, we, you end up in Revelation or you're talking about uh, tithing. Those are kind of the two times where we're new. So I'm expecting next service to be full of, of new, new people. But I want to dive into Revelation. That's where we're at. The problem is, remember, we're going through the entire Bible in two years. I don't know about you, but as, as I'm trying to preach, I feel like I am running a marathon, trying to keep up with Know the Word. I'm like, oh great, we're in Revelations, and then, you know, suddenly we're out. And then we're in the next book, and so I feel like I'm literally just kind of skipping across the top of all of these books, and I hope you're getting a, a hunger and a thirst for God's Word as we do this. So I'm not going to be able to go into crazy in-depth into Revelation. Revelation, and I'm going to keep calling it Revelations, it's not. It's Revelation. It is one. It is a very unified theme. It's not a whole bunch of Revelations that John got. It was a Revelation that God gave him. And we're going to talk about that in a minute. But so I'm, I'm hoping to do Revelation justice over the next two weeks, and then all of a sudden we're out of it again. So I've never seen anybody be able to go through Revelation in two weeks, so there are going to be things that we're going to skip and miss, and it's okay. Read it, and we will we'll get through it. So keep reading through Revelation uh, the rest of this week with the Know the Word. It's an app that you can put on your phone that will keep you up to date where we are. I believe we're in week 80 starting on Monday. Holy cow. We are, we're quickly getting through this. All right, so turn your Bibles to Revelation 1. Revelation 1 begins like this. The revelation from Jesus Christ, which God gave him to show what must soon take place. Okay. Everyone asks, what is Revelations about? It is, the, it is the hardest book, the most divisive book. People are, are divided over who's this and what country is this and what's happening here. And, and they use Revelation to divide. What is the purpose of Revelation? We just heard it. It is the revelation of who? Jesus Christ. It's about Jesus. If you're trying to figure out what else it's about, you're wrong. It's about Jesus. If you're trying to figure out, you know, it, what order things are going to happen, that's not what he's trying to put across. He's trying to show you who Jesus is. If you haven't noticed the common theme over the past couple weeks, God wants us to know him. He wants us to know who he is. And Revelation is a book written that we might know Jesus and we might know what is going to happen. This book was written, we're not 100% sure, they don't give us the dates of when it was written. But Nero was, uh, was emperor uh, up until almost 70 uh, 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 AD. And he persecuted the Christians horribly. They were destroyed and decimated as a people. The persecutions under him were incredible. Whether this book was written to the churches during that time or after that time, it doesn't make a difference. He's going to talk about persecution. Now I want you to think, the original audience is a people who were persecuted, who were losing heart, who were starting to, to fall into, what, where are you, God? What's happening? What's going to happen from here? They were discouraged. Revelation is a book of encouragement. What God does is he says, listen, I know you are, you're struggling. I know it's hard, but let me tell you the end of the story. Let me tell you what's going to happen so that it's a lot easier to go through all of the things that you're going through because we win. And literally, that's all you need to know. Revelation could literally just be called, we win, and just be 
that phrase, and that's it. That Jesus is victorious. That his death on the cross sets us free once and for all and completely. For all of those who sit back and struggle and say, you know what, why does God allow evil in this world? When is he going to come and just wipe out evil? I, I've seen it. I, when's he going to come and wipe out cancer? When is he going to come and wipe out the, the depravity that is in this world? Revelation is the answer, yes. He does. So for all those people who sit back and say, I will never, I, I met a lady in, in the line, I don't know how it was in a line at a wedding. She came to me and said to me, I will never believe in a God who allows such horrible things to happen and allows evil to exist. And I said to her, you have to understand, that's why he wrote Revelation. He doesn't. He doesn't allow it. He doesn't allow it to continue. But he also wants every one of his children to come to a saving knowledge of him. And so, no, he cannot wipe out evil because he would have had to have wiped me out. And so if, if I, if I want to take salvation from my God, then I also have to understand that he can't totally wipe evil out or else he would have had to have wiped all of us out first. So evil has to continue to go so that he can redeem us who were evil, who were part of the wrath that deserves from him. And in the end, when, his, when all of his children have come to him, when they've all heard and accepted him, then it's over. And he does wipe out evil. He does care. He is ready to fight. And Revelations is a scary, terrifying book, not for us, <laughs> but for evil. And that's what we need to first start off and understand. So he says, listen, this is a revelation from Jesus Christ. This is the revelation. The word uh, from and of are, are kind of synonymous in here. It can, be, it can either be from him or about him or, or of him. It doesn't matter. The, the book is written about who Jesus is, which God gave him to show his servants what must take place. Remember, they're being persecuted. So God is sitting here saying, be encouraged. For all of you who've had a rough week, be encouraged. That's what this is all about. He made it known by sending his angels to his servant John, who testifies of everything he saw. And this is what he saw. That is the word of God and the testimony of of Jesus Christ. So this book is a testimony of Jesus Christ and the word of God. Blessed is the one who reads aloud the words of this prophecy. So I'm blessed. I get to read it to you. I get to read it aloud. It says blessed is the one who reads aloud the words of this prophecy. This book was sent to seven churches. The main seven churches that were there at this time. He was sending it out to these churches and it was meant to be read aloud to encourage people who were being discouraged. And so they were meant to be in a gathering as a church and this is to be read to them. So blessed is the one who reads it aloud, the words of this prophecy. And blessed are those who hear it and take to heart what is written in it because the time is near. Blessed is the one who hears it and takes it to heart. How many times have we heard things but not allowed it to sink in? He says, listen, I want you to allow this to sink in. This book is not incredibly difficult. We make it difficult because we try to interpret the, the bejeebies out of this thing. We try to interpret every last little piece. That's not what it's supposed to be. It's a book of prophecy to show you how God acts, what his character is, how things usually go about, what he does, and so that we might know the end of the story is why he sends his prophecy. So he says, listen, blessed are you who hear it and take it to heart. You're meant to hear it and understand and do something with it. John, to the seven churches in the province of Asia, these are the seven churches in that area. 
grace and peace to you from him who is and who was and who is to come, and from the seven spirits before his throne, and from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness, the firstborn from the dead, and the ruler of the kings of the earth. Jesus is supreme. We've been talking about this in our Bible study uh, on, uh, on Hebrews on Monday morning. That Jesus is the one who is supreme. It says, the one who was, the one who is, and the one who is to come. I put them in the wrong order. It's the one who, who is, who was, and is to come. But, but he's talking about this is who Jesus is. That he is the one who is supreme. He is the one. He is God. For those of you who sit back and question and say, okay, God, where are you in this? What, why, why would God allow us? That lady who's standing in line saying, I'll never believe in a God that... Who are you to be so arrogant to question God who is and was and is to come? You, you just is. He is God and you are not. There are going to be things that you do not understand, but in our mind, if we can't understand it, He can't exist. We can't have that. God is supreme. He is sovereign. He is the one who is in control of all. That phrase that He is the one who was and is and is to come shows His sovereignty. I love when God, when, when, <laughs> when um, I keep wanting to call him, when Job, I almost said Jonah, when Job starts asking all these questions, God says, no, let me ask you a question. Where were you when I put the stars and hung them in the sky? Where were you when I measured out the depths of the water and made sure there was enough hydrogen and oxygen to fill all of this? Where were you? We have to sit back and say, well, you are God. I'm not. You're the one who put all of this in place. He is the one who was and is and is to come. This book is because we question God all the time. And God says, don't question. He's not afraid of your questions. But don't question him. He's never afraid of your questions. But when we come and we put ourselves above him, that's when we run into a problem. And so he says, you know what? We're going we're gonna to tell you what's to come so that you can be encouraged, so that you can know. So it, 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 I, I take Rick and, and Vicki. When Vicki found out that she had cancer, we were all terrified. And we all began to pray. And we were all on our knees. If, if we had known she was going to be it, and, and that she would be fine, and that she would be here today. Man, it would be so much easier, wouldn't it? The encouragement we would have had from that. That's what God is doing here. He's saying, no, no, I've beat it all. I've beat it all. I am victorious. If you want to be victorious, come with me. So let's keep going. To him who loves us and has freed us from our sins by his blood, and has made us to be a kingdom and priests to serve his Father and, and God. To him be the glory and the power forever. Amen. Who are we talking about? Jesus. He is the one who has saved you. He has died on the cross that your sins might be forgiven. Simply put, he has saved you. He is your Savior. He's reminding you, not only is he your Savior, but he also made you a holy priesthood. He has given you purpose. He has given you a reason. And as you go through this persecution, stand firm. Because this persecution, it's, it's only temporary. We're going to win this thing. And you're a huge piece of this. That God has made you his child. And he has made you a holy priesthood. He's giving them encouragement from the beginning. He's saying, no, no, you're important. I know you feel like somehow you've been forgotten, but you haven't. Jesus Christ died for you. Stop feeling like you don't matter. In the middle of our cancer, in the middle of our persecutions, in the middle of our, our worst days, we always think, well, maybe I don't matter. He's saying, no, no, no. To him who has freed you 
from our sins by his blood and has made us to be his kingdom and priests to serve God his Father. He's saying, listen, you have purpose. All of this that you have, stop acting like you're meaningless. I don't know what it is that is is holding you down. We sung that song where it said that the prison walls fell down and there's nothing in between us. What's in between you and him? Is it a fear? Is it a cancer? Is it a loneliness? Is it, he's saying none of that should be between us. God has set us free and he has wiped that all out. Let's keep reading because it gets better. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, who is and was and is to come, the Almighty. Drop the mic. I, John, your brother and companion in the suffering in the kingdom and patient endurance that are ours, In Jesus was on the island of Patmos because of the word of God and the testimony of Jesus. So he's saying, listen, I know you are going through suffering. We're all going through suffering. But God has granted us patient endurance through Jesus. Even I have suffered, John is saying. Even I have suffered. I was was taken and exiled onto this island in Patmos. So I couldn't share the gospel with anyone. So God came and gave me a vision. And told me to write this down and to share it with everyone. So that while I was here on this island in peace and quiet, not really peace, he was stranded. But he was able to have a vision that he was going to pass on, and that's what he's talking about. And he says, God told me, this is what you write. Send this out to the seven churches, that they may be encouraged, that they may know what is to come. This is knowing that these people are, in, are, are panicked, are suffering, are beginning to lose heart. And he's saying, no, take this to heart. Jesus is Lord. He is the Almighty. You are his priest to serve in him. He died for you. Are you encouraged? Y'all looking at me like this. It's 10 o'clock this morning. It's 10. You are the early risers. If the second service I made come here and they gave me that face. But this is Jesus Christ who came and he set you free. The, the, whatever went through this week, whether it was a death of a loved one, an announcement of cancer, whatever it is that has you trapped this week, it is not as big as Jesus Christ. He wins. Do you see the encouragement we get from, from Revelation? This is a book full of encouragement. He's saying, listen, I saw this vision. Let me tell you what he says. So let's skip down. We're going to look at verse uh, 12. It says, I turned around to see the voice that was speaking to me. And when I turned, I saw seven golden lampstands. Among the lampstands was someone like the Son of Man, dressed in a robe, reaching down to his feet with a golden sash around his chest. The hair on his head was as white as wool, as white as snow. And his eyes were like blazing fire, and his feet were like bronze glowing in a furnace. And his voice was like the sound of rushing water. In his right hand he held seven stars, and coming out of his mouth was a sharp double-edged sword. His face was like the sun shining in all of its brilliance. What? Somebody draw that for me. He used this word, one like, because he's trying to describe something that is undescribable. He's trying to take what is unknown and make it explainable. That Jesus has a sword coming out of his mouth. He's walking around these lampstands. He's holding stars in his hand. What in the world is going on? This is where we get ourselves in trouble. We get ourselves in trouble because then we're like, okay, well, this is what this means. No, what is the point? We know what it means to have a double-edged sword that divides bone and marrow, that divides soul and spirit, that Jesus can speak truth straight into the middle of your life. How awesome is that? How many of you need Christ to speak truth all the way back into your past? Well, he, is a, he has a tongue that can speak that truth. It is like a double-edged sword that speaks to you. There's nothing fancy about trying to figure out what that means. 
It's just meaning that he was a, he, there was this man standing there amongst lampstands holding stars that was full of glory. Full of glory. And it was Jesus. When I saw him, I fell at his feet as though I was dead. Then he placed his right hand on me and said, Do not be afraid. Once again he says it. I am the first and the last. I am the living one. I was dead and now look. I am alive forever and ever. And I took hold of the keys of death and Hades. So write, therefore, what you have seen, what is now, and what will take place later. The mysteries of the seven stars that you saw in the right hand and the seven golden lampstands is this. The seven stars are the angels or messengers of the seven churches. And the seven lampstands are the seven churches. Here's a quick tip. If God wants you to fully understand something, he will explain it. And he explained it. Why is his hair white? I don't know. Why is his eyes glowing and burning like a furnace? I don't know. But what I do know is what God explained. If God wants you to know, he will explain it more. There are things that we don't need to know or that he does not want us to know or we are not ready to know. So stop trying, well, not always try to hear him and to hear what his, what his voice says. Always look into it. But if it's something that you cannot know, then it's okay. It's okay not to know. He would explain it to you. What do the angels do? We talked about this in our Bible study. There's people that have crazy theologies on what angels are. Whatever the Scripture says is what it is, but there's not a whole lot about it. If God truly wanted us to know what that was all about, He would have fully explained it to us. So what He does is He gives us glimpses into things He wants us to see, that to know Him and to know what is to come, that we might be encouraged. So he writes these things down. He begins and he writes to these seven churches. So I want you to see what begins to happen. There are three visions in the book of Revelation. Three visions that are going to go. This first vision is to churches. He's going to explain what's going on in the churches and they follow a pattern. He starts off by saying, this is what you're doing well. I see you, he says. I see the deeds that you've done. And he always starts off with, this is what you're doing well. He says, well, I have this against you. Then he tells them how to change it. And he tells them what the reward is as they follow and obey. That's what he does. Now, one thing I do want you to know is that churches and Christians are not perfect. Judging Jesus by us. Stop judging who Jesus is by how Christians act because we get it wrong and we go astray and we fall apart. That does not mean that Jesus is anything less. On the contrary, it means he is that much more awesome because he forgives and loves and continues to grow. And so we begin to look at these, these churches and we only get a chance in chapter 2 because this is all as far as we got in Know the Word to see the first four of these churches. Let me run through real fast what he says to the churches. And then we'll close. He says this to the first church. He says, I see you persevering and that you don't tolerate sin, but you've lost the love that you had at first. You lost love and unity. You, they probably became a very legalistic church to defend themselves against false teaching. And so they lost the love that they had for one another. And what is his advice? Repent. Go back and do what you did at first. Go sell your property and care for one another. Don't stress about all of the, the little details. Stop. Love one another. Love on each other. That's what you need to do as a church. That's how you're going to stand. He says, and you will be victorious. And the one who is found victorious will eat from the tree of life. To the second church, he says, I know your afflictions and your poverty. He has nothing against them. 
He says, I know your afflictions, and your, and, but I know you're rich. Not money-wise, but you're rich because you stand firm. He doesn't, this is the one church he doesn't say anything about that, they, that he holds against them. And he says, do not be afraid and remain faithful. You will not be hurt by the second death. That's his encouragement to them. So listen to the encouragements. He's saying, listen, you can eat from the tree of life that is in the paradise that God has created. In God's paradise, you will eat of that fruit. You will not have to be worried about the second death. It will not sting you. He's encouraging these people who are persecuting and watching family members and friends and church members eaten by lions in the Colosseum. He says, don't. If you stand firm, this is what you have. Third church, I know where you live, but you remain true. That you did not renounce me. That in the middle of all of the sin and the culture that was around them, they did not renounce him. And the reason why the church was persecuted so much was because they continued to worship God and not the emperor. And when Nero found that out, he lost his mind and began to chase after the church. And so this is what he's saying. You didn't. You didn't deny me. You, stand, you stood firm. And he's encouraging them. He's saying, listen, this is what you did. But you know what? Sin abounds in your, in your church. Sexual immorality in particular. And you listen to this uh, false teaching that there's some special knowledge out there that you have to get. And when you have that special knowledge, you're better than everyone else. There's no special knowledge. That's why he's writing this book in Revelations. And he's saying, no, no, the Holy Spirit reveals it all to everyone. Are you listening? And so he says, if you remain faithful. Oh, his, uh, his uh, word to them is repent. Again, repent. And the hidden manna, which is, is a stone of life, will be given to you. And a stone, a white stone with a new name, will be written on it and given to you. What does that mean? We don't know. My best guess of that is name just means who you are you will finally know and be who God created you to be. That all the sin and all of the things where Paul is saying, why do I do the things I don't want to do? Why do I keep falling for this? That's over. And who you were created to be, you finally get to be set free. Last one. He says, I see the love and the faith and the service that you have and your perseverance in all of this. But there's a woman who is in there causing sexual immorality and with false teachings. He says, repent and hold on to what you have till I come and I will give you authority over the nations. Do you see what God is doing here? He's encouraging them. Just as he's encouraging us. He's saying, listen, there's walls that are between us. The prison walls have fallen down. There's nothing in between us, but you keep putting things in between us. You keep trying to rebuild these prison walls. Stop it. We don't need the sexual immorality that is in between us. We don't need the fear and the false teachings. No, stand firm. Repent. And God will rescue you. And so he is encouraging the church. And he's saying, okay, yes, there are things that need to change. But look at how good you are doing. You're running a good race. There are a few things that are coming in between us. Let's get rid of them, and then we're ready for this fight. And that's what the rest of Revelations is about. Are you ready for this? Are you ready for what's to come? And he's building them up, and he's saying, listen, you are my army. Are you ready for this? Just persevere, because we win this fight. We win what's to come. Are you ready for that? Are there things that are in between you and your relationship with God that make it hard for you to stand firm? That make it hard for you to be victorious? If it's sin, then we need to repent. If it is fears, then we need to, to hold on. and We need to see what we have and, and chase after Christ. And take our eyes off of our problems and keep our eyes focused on Him. 
Is Revelations this hard to understand? Not very. We're almost all the way through chapter 3. We make it more complicated than we need to. Remember, this is a book of encouragement. God wants to encourage you. There are hard things to come. Because we live in an evil world. And guess what? Yes, God is going to wipe out evil. He's not going to do it right now because he's not willing to lose the little ones who were just born who are going to come to know him. He doesn't want to wipe them out. Yes, there's going to be pain. There's going to be awful abuse. There's going to be horrendous things that happen in this world. And God's heart is broken and you can see his anger towards it. And he is going to do something about it. And he does do something about it. Stop questioning him and start standing on the side that's going to win. And that's him. And we get to celebrate with him. He died for us. We're in relationship with him. This is a story about our brother, Jesus Christ, who died on the cross, who we are co-heirs with, who have made it able that we might be called sons and daughters of the king. Wow. That's Revelations. We should be excited to read this book. Whenever I bring up Revelation, people are like, mm, that's a terrifying book. It's not a terrifying book. It's an encouraging book. It's terrifying if you don't want to get rid of the sin in your life. Be terrified. Be desperately terrified if you want to play with sin. But if you want to walk with the Father, if you want to know Him more, it's all available for you. And we walk with him. And we have freedom. And we have life. And it's how it's supposed to be. And yes, there's going to be difficult things to come. That's the first part of Revelation. Let me, one more thing. I know we're getting late. One more thing. Whenever there's an apocalyptic book, whenever there's a prophecy book, it, it, it is, it's like an onion. It's for today. It's for back then. And it's for the future. Because this is how God works. And so what he says is, that, yes, there's going to be horrendous persecution. There is horrendous persecution. And there will be. There will be hard things in your life. They're not going to go away. But you can walk firm through them. You can hold one another up like what we're going to try to do uh, this afternoon at 3.30. Remember meeting here at the church to go and pray for Megan that we might hold one another up. Why? Because we know the end. We know the end of this story, that Christ is victorious, and we are an army to follow him. Hopefully you now are really encouraged to read the rest of Revelation. The rest of Revelation, you're going to keep going, what? What? We'll go through it next week. But know that the very beginning, he's setting up by encouraging and saying, listen, you're running the race. You're in the race. Some of you are stumbling around. Stand up. Let's tie these shoes and let's keep running. Because we win. So don't quit. We win. So all, no matter how hard things are right now, no matter how much you miss the people that, are, that you've lost this year, no matter how much the, the, the fear and these, these problems are, Christ wins. And he sets us free. What a God we serve. Heavenly Father, Lord, I praise you for how much you love your children. Lord, you love your children so much you showed us that you win. That we can be victorious. Not only can we be, but we are because of Jesus Christ. Father, we may have fires in our lives, but we're not in them alone. And we will not be set ablaze because you, you are our Savior. Encourage our hearts, and I thank you for revelation. I thank you that it means so much to us today because we know the truth, that you are God. You were, you are, and you always will be. Father, open our eyes to see you more clearly. I thank you for how you love us. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. As the worship team comes up, we are going to uh, have a few elders up front ready to pray for anybody who needs prayer, anybody who wants to come up and praise, anybody who wants to come and accept Christ. We are here. Thank you.
Please stand as we sing.
song comes from the blessing that God tells uh, Moses to, to teach the Levites to say over the, the sons of Aaron, to say over the Israelites. And he says, by that, they will put my name on my people. That is a blessing for us. That God's name is on us. The one who is victorious, the one who wins, his name is on us. And we have his name. Father, we thank you. We thank you that you are victorious, that you care and love us even though we continue to mess up. Even though we continue to fail and we continue to put things between you and I. I pray that you, you would continue to be a wall breaker break down those walls, grant us repentance. Help us to repent and to change that we might be able to see you more clearly. Father, if there's anybody here who doesn't know you, who doesn't know the joy and the peace they can have by being in a relationship with you, Lord, I pray that you who stand at the door and knock today, I pray that you would grant them the ability to open that door. Father, you are an amazing God. Come into relationship with us. Draw us in closer. Give us a passion for you and compassion for others. Help us to stand on the truth that Jesus Christ has set us free from our sin by dying on the cross for us. We praise you. We thank you for your incredible plan. We thank you for all that you do. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Have a wonderful week. I'll see you next Sunday.